Hi, I'm Eva, here at Bereva Creative, and today we are going to be showing off my brand new 3D printer. Brad got it for me for Christmas. I have worked with 3D printers before, and I'm very excited to have one of my own. And today we're going to be showing that off and making something that we desperately need, a wine rack. We make our own wine, so we have tons of wine in a cabinet in piles of bottles that are very disorganized, and we need to get that organized and this is a great way to test our new 3D printer and organize our wine. So two words with one stone. Let's get to it. So to start off, first we need to design this thing. We could easily grab a file from Thingiverse, uh, that's a website where, that has STLs and a lot of other cool stuff that you can just download and use, but we've decided to make this a little bit more custom. I'm using SketchUp to make this file. There's a ton of different softwares you can use to make 3D files for your 3D printer, but I prefer SketchUp for most applications. So all I'm doing here is creating the hexagons that will hold the bottles on their side and making connectors that will hopefully click right into place without the use of glue. I'm giving the connectors a little bit of an offset so that the pieces will fit together hopefully. I'm going to go with a 32nd inch gap on each side for now. That might be a little bit too much, but we can finesse as we go. This is the first time I'm connecting two pieces with this 3D printer, so right now it's all just trial and error. And now that we've got our basic shape together, next I'm going to copy a million of these doodles to stack them together and create our wine rack. As a side note, we won't be printing all this at one time, it'll be piece by piece, but I want to design the whole rack before I split it up into parts for printing. Now, this whole process probably took me about 30 minutes to make this whole model, so really not too bad. And there we go. This is what I want this wine rack to look like. I may scale down the quantity of bottles this can hold later on based on how much printer filament we end up using, but we'll see. Now you can see I'm separating the parts to get them ready for printing. We'll export this file from SketchUp as an STL file, which stands for stereolithography. Don't ask me why, but that's the standard file type that 3D printers generally take. After you export to an STL from whatever program you're using, you're going to have to bring it into a splicer program. If you're new to 3D printing, basically the splicer program translates the STL file that you made into a language that the 3D printer can understand. Kira is a standard splicer that a lot of people use. This one is a little bit different. It came standard with our 3D printer. It's called FlashPrint. And honestly, I kind of like it. It's a lot like Kira, and we haven't had any issues with it so far. Its user face is extremely intuitive. The only complaint that I have so far, and it's a really minor one, and if you're new to 3D printing, this may confuse you, but I'll explain later. But the raft size that it uses is pretty large and wastes a lot of plastic, and there's no real way to change it to my knowledge. So our file is now ready to go, and we just send it to the printer via Wi-Fi, and it's on its way. So here's a close-up of our 3D printer. We absolutely love this thing. It's the Monoprice Voxel, which is a rebranded version of the Flash Forge Adventurer 3. A lot of people that I know don't want to get into 3D printing because of the cost and the quality of home use machines, but I gotta say, I've worked with brands like Ultimaker, which is a real high-end printer that costs a couple thousand, and the quality is honestly comparable for what I'm looking for. Obviously, the resolution can be a lot better on an expensive machine, but overall, this thing is amazing. We picked it up on sale for about 350 bucks, and we've printed probably 30 prints on it so far, and the only printing fails that we have had are user errors. We do do stupid things sometimes, but who doesn't? Here's a super fine print that I did. Just look how thin this is, it's really crazy. A 
Uh, we also printed this super fine Christmas ornament and it turned out great as well. Okay, let's get started with our first test print. Hopefully it works perfect the first time and I won't have to reprint or redesign, but you know how that goes. I wanna say this print took about two hours and that all depends on the size of the object, the complexity of the object, your infill, infill settings, and whether you use a raft or not. Uh, by the way, a raft is the bottom layer that you see here that will come off after the print is done. All it does is keep your print adhered to the printing bed and keeps it from lifting or curling up. So far the hexagon is looking a little bit thick so I might come back and thin that up a tad and start from there. And here's why I called this a test print. The gap between the stick and the hexagon is way too big and I'll have to adjust this on my next print. Also, Brad did math wrong and a wine bottle doesn't fit inside the hexagon. So that's a problem. Oh well, back to the drawing board, I guess. Okay, I have revamped the file so that it's now half as thick as, as it used to be to save on material actually fits a wine bottle and only has a 1 1 28th inch gap between the stick and the hexagon that should fit together nice and snug. While we're waiting for this print to finish up, let me tell you some of the features about this printer. Uh, this isn't sponsored at all, I'm just super happy with it. So it has a build area of roughly 6 inches cubed. Uh, it's enclosed so that you can print with ABS plastic and not worry so much about toxic fumes. It also keeps it free from dust and cat hair and cat paws. I'm looking at you, Mo. The fact that it's enclosed also helps to keep the noise level down significantly. It's by far the quietest printer I've ever used. There's a super easy to use touchscreen, built-in Wi-Fi. It has a built-in camera that you can monitor your prints and stop them remotely, which is awesome. I just wish the camera quality was a little bit better so that you could use it for time lapses as well. It also has auto leveling abilities that keep the bed nice and flat so you have an even surface to print on. We haven't even had to recalibrate it yet. And with a max nozzle temperature of 240 Celsius, you can use a lot of different types of plastic. PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, TPE, TPC, to name a few. Okay, this print is looking a lot better, so now it's time to get into production mode. Each one of these hexagons took a little over an hour to print, so this poor machine was running nonstop for a few days. But everything turned out amazing, and I didn't have a single print failure. As a side note, I'm using PLA plastic for all of these. It's biodegradable and non-toxic, which is a huge plus. We also have a lot of our little connector pieces as well as some little hexagon tab pieces that I designed to give it a little bit more rigidity. Fingers crossed this all works. Now to assembly. So far so good, they are all staying together nice and tight without the use of glue. I probably will glue it together once I've found a configuration that I like, but for now we're gonna go with the glueless route.
and we're one hexagon short. I know it's around here somewhere. Okay, I found it. Our cat Myrtle had decided to take a nap on it. Thanks, Myrtle. And hey, sometimes happy accidents do happen. Looking back on this, we designed this a little bit silly. Where the neck of the wine bottle would rest, we designed it to sit on the straight side of the hexagon. But we decided we didn't like that, so when we decided to rotate the hexagons, we realized that it was much more structurally stable if we built the whole thing completely sideways. So that just happened to work out for us. Usually we're not so lucky with stuff like that. But hey, no complaints. It's time to start adding these stabilization hexagons, and these things really do the trick. That's the really great thing about 3D printing is that it's all so customizable, and if you run into an issue with your design or whatever, you can always easily adapt it by printing another dongle or piece or what have you. Oh man, I really hope this thing holds up. Next time, I'd probably print the hexagons to be a little bit thicker, not as thick as our original print, but some happy medium in between there. And we we're looking pretty good so far with the bottles. And remember, none of this is glued at all, so it's really quite amazing that it can handle 10 bottles of full wine bottles. And we did it! Woohoo! It's a little bit wobbly, so I might print a few more of those little hexagon tab things uh, just to help me sleep at night. But other than that, we are good to go. And look at that final product. We are looking really good. I'm so happy with how this came out. And again, this is totally customizable, so you can make it as big or as small as you like. Uh, I'll probably double this in size at some point uh, we just ran out of plastic for this video i really want to hear your feedback on this so comment subscribe like let me know what you think and see you next time